Texas Toast Guitars, thanks for watching another wildly exciting uh, guitar building and repair question and answer um, video. This is a live video that we try to do every Thursday, with the exception of those Thursdays where we are doing a live training course. So once a month we do that, every other Thursday we do the, this, uh, this live Q&A, and I think they are really fun. What do you think, Chris? Well, I like doing them. I, I have a good time. Do you think that people uh, are watching and go, I'm going to try to stump Matt and Chris with this? I hope not, because it's, it's not that hard to stump us. I but mean, do we, don't, you, we know a lot, but we don't know everything. But do you think that they do? Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, I hope not too, but I think that they kind of do. So. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, so anyway, thanks guys for watching. I'd like to thank also our good friends at Flipside Music, the great American guitar store. If you're in the Denver area, go in and uh, say hey to Ike, Dylan, Nico, and MJ. Tell them the guys at Texas Toast sent you, and they will give you a big kiss on the mouth. They no, will. they won't. No, but, no. Um, but they'll be happy to see you and uh, let you play cool guitars. If you're not in the Denver area, you can shop at Flipside Music. Uh, their online store, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're always open. They never close, and they have lots of good stuff there. Are we having more issues, a little more technical difficulties? Yeah, keep going, okay. though, and I'll sort it out. I'd um, like to thank our friends at Aquacoat for uh, sponsoring the, uh, the live stream. If you guys are interested in Aquacoat high-performance grain filler, you can uh, go to their website, and at checkout, type in the, uh, the, the code TEXASTOAST10 at checkout and save yourself 10%. Save a little bit of money on Aquacoat. It's a cool product that we use, and it's a, it's a good deal, too. There's nothing wrong with saving a little bit of money. Um, uh, links in the description below to all of those codes, like the one from uh, Guitarwood Experts. Dan and Calvin over at Guitarwood Experts have a deal right now. Texas Toast 15, if you uh, type in or call Dan or, or at checkout, if you go to their website, they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week too. Or you can call Dan at you know regular business hours and tell him what you want and tell him the guys at Texas Toast sent you and he'll give you a little bit of a break too. Also, uh, uh, let's see, like to thank John and Cheryl at Bitterroot Guitars, who have been uh, a longtime sponsor of the show. They uh, have a deal right now. It's the same as the deal that they always have, which is T-X-T-O-A-S-T -T at checkout. And uh, you get 15% off your order from Bitterroot, so that's no, no chump change neither. Um, and Bitterroot Guitars has almost everything you need to, uh, to put together cool guitars. Um, did you know, though, I'm working on a new sponsor. Uh, I did, show. you but did. go ahead and tell everybody. So I'm working on a sponsor with Grizzly, a sponsorship deal with Grizzly Tools. You guys are going to get a discount code with Grizzly Tools when, uh, when as soon as they get their, their, you know, all the balls in motion at Grizzly Tools. I had to order a new planer today, and um, uh, so I talked with someone there over there and uh, working on that deal. It's not ready yet, but it will be soon. So uh, if you're if you're wanting to buy some Grizzly stuff, or you're thinking maybe this year's the year you're going to buy that uh, super awesome fretboard radius rig, um, and you're waiting for a deal, I, Matt at Texas Toast might have something for you coming up very very soon. But uh, so thank you to all of our sponsors, and thanks to you guys for watching. We have a few special guests in studio today. In studio, it's just the shop, but yeah. So, um, uh, so Rod and Bob and uh, Bob's uh, lovely wife, are, Julie, are here in the shop, and they are uh, Rod and Bob are both taking the uh, um, uh, build a classic set neck guitar class. Julie is just sort of uh, footloose and fancy free in COVID lockdown Denver. So yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, Brad couldn't make it; he had to uh, zip off because he is a brain surgeon. So anyway. Uh, well, enough of the bullshit talk. Let's jump right in. Do we have any questions yet? Yes, Chris? Doc Siltonen hey, Doc. wants to know um, how to store a neck until he can get going on his project. Uh, would hanging it be best? I would say just put it just... <laughs> no, I don't think you need to hang it. Or Here's do, how you do yeah. it. Yeah. Chris is going to give you Any the flat one. surface in the shop, you just stack it full of shit. And then you put the neck right on top. That's very, what I do. Very yeah. precariously, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I can tell you last Wednesday, we have a lot of flat surfaces in this shop, including tools. Mm -hmm. Those count as flat surfaces. Oh, yeah, and chairs. And chairs and <laughs> stools. Every single flat surface had a stack of stuff <laughs> on it. And I came in and I needed about that much workspace, and it took me 10 minutes to clear off a spot. 
Yeah. You have you have <laughs> also have this idea, this notion of there are as many strata of projects stacked on top of other projects. So sometimes uh -huh. there's like a flat surface with nothing on it. That'd uh -huh. be level zero. And then like I put some stuff on it. That's level one. And then I put another project on top of that and another mm -hmm. project on top of that and some tools. And that is, uh, yeah, there's many, many, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's sort of like an archeological dig yeah. sometimes to find stuff here. In the, the, one, the one ruler that you need is going to be buried somewhere in the middle of that. Always yeah. under a big pile of junk. Mm -hmm. But in terms of storing a neck uh, for safekeeping, yeah, you, you could hang it, uh, you know, on like a nail or something on the wall. And, and uh, yeah, that, that's a good way to go. You could rest it on anything flat. I don't think that um, uh, at the stage that you are in right now, if the neck is already done, it should be, you know, Good to go sitting somewhere. And here's what I wouldn't do is lean it on something so that the headstock's on a wall and the, the heel is on the ground and there's, you know, may or may not be an inch of water on the ground. Obviously, you don't want that. But, yeah, I wouldn't lean it against anything. But, uh, yeah, hanging it or resting it flat. I also would not use it as a way to hold my hood open on my car. No, no. And I would not put it in my practice space. Um, my guitar player one time used a Fender Stratocaster neck that was his. It wasn't my neck. It was his neck. He used it as a hammer one time to, uh, to beat some, some like picture hanging hooks or something. I don't know what he was doing, but yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Okay. Uh, Travis Elmore says, what did hey, you Travis. guys do for dust collection on your fretboard sander? Uh, the, the fretboard radius sander comes with a dust collection port all ready to go from grizzly tools yeah so we and, used the uh, what is it four inch hose yeah you just hook a four inch hose up and uh, yep. you can hook that up to a vacuum a shop vac or we have one of those um uh you know dust collecting things and that would work too you know what we could do we could show him we could this is the part of the show where we go live uh in uh so yeah and away we go you got people that don't want to be seen. So this is. Hang on. Okay. So this is uh, our dust, one of our dust collection units right here, and you can see that it's got these four-inch lines here. Look at all this dust collection. <laughs> all this dust collection, there should be no dust at all. So what you would do is you would hook up this four-inch hose here, coming from the dust collector, to this dust collection port right here on the old sander and the dust goes right from the sander directly into the dust port that one's one of the better ones that we have it actually is yeah, yeah. some of the other tools like that tool yeah there's, there's really no no yeah, it goes everywhere there's no way you'd have to have that whole thing would have to be a dust collector yeah there's no really hot setup for the uh, for the shaper uh the deadhead sander has a pretty decent dust collection system the, um, Travis says his doesn't have that port. Oh, well, I don't know what to tell you then. I, make maybe, a port sort of like that. Yeah, um, it, looks like, it looks like this could be added on, Travis. Uh, there, there are some, you know, some, just some screws here. And I would bet you that if you contacted Grizzly, provided you have a Grizzly unit, and say, hey, I didn't get a dust port, um, they would be happy to, uh, to, to get you one. But if you don't have a Grizzly, then I don't know. Doug says he noticed that we just cleaned out the uh, the bag. We did. We filled it up this week. We went from uh, about that much all the way to the top <laughs> yeah. with class. All right. Okay. This is the part of the show where everybody gets seasick. I like going on location uh, once during the live stream to show people, hey, I have a question about this. How mm -hmm. do I do it? And then we just we just take you there and show you. We can't do it for everyone's question, but I think that for uh, for that one, that was a... That was a great question to do it, too. That was. Next question um, from uh, Christopher Brandt. Have you guys ever used Solar Res or Solar Ease? I think no. Solar Res. We have never used it. Uh, Jesse, um, the guy that rents space from us and, and rents, it started out, he rented uh, paint booth space from us specifically rent space for us because he does not like solar res. Yeah. It takes too long to cure and it's not all it's cracked up to be according to him. I well and you and I have have both seen um 
the results of that particular product, and we are not fans. Now, that it's not a, it's not an indictment of the product as much as like anything. Um, I'm sure that you can get great results with SolarEdge. Um, I have not ever seen great results with it. I'm and again, not an indictment of the product, an indictment of of the the people who are applying said product. Yeah. I like the idea of mm -hmm. it. Um, I'm just not wild about some of the results that I've seen now. Yeah, what's his name from Highline, Chris? I think Chris at Highline Guitars uses, uses it, it or has used his it. Stuff looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So I think you can get great results. I've never used it, and I don't. I don't have any plans to use mm -hmm. it. So I, I. How about this? I don't think that it is any better than what we use now. Now, if you don't have a spray booth, that might be a great choice, but. You know, again, you need to. There's a learning curve with all this paint stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, there is. One of the things I don't like about uh, any product is now you take it out into the sun, and the sun activates the the UV cure mechanism in the paint. Yeah. Have you ever gone to the dentist and they've got you know they've got like mm -hmm. uh, UV cure tooth filling stuff? Mm -hmm. So imagine this: if they said, "Okay, now hold your mouth open and walk outside and go." Uh, and and let the sun get in there and and bake those and, and activate the UV cure stuff in the in the the whatever that stuff is they put in your mouth. Yeah, you know what I mean. Would you would you go? This is great. Or and I I want to start. You know th this is a great thing. I think I'm going to use. No, they have a really special light that was probably fairly expensive and and it works every time. And then you can eat corn on the cob again. I don't know how the solar as stuff works, but I do know that the the root bird is solar, and that means you take it outside and let the sun hit it, and that should do it. So imagine if you were at the dentist office and they asked you to do that. There you go. Yeah. Matthew Cohen wants to know, uh, he has a question from Sunday's show, if you're post fret leveling and one comes loose, is it better to replace it or glue it back in? I think is the rest of that question. Yeah, I, I, I would say try to glue it back in first. What, yeah. would, what would you do? Yeah, if it's loose, um, presumably it's because there's not enough wood and you're going to end up having to glue the new fret in anyway. You have to glue the new fret so, in anyway, that's right. And then yeah. re-level, so I would try to glue it in. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Scourge wants to know, do any of the big box stores sell a decent double sticky tape for sticking sandpaper to flat beams for fret leveling, surely that thick foam mounting tape is no bueno. Yeah, the 3M thick mounting tape, uh, that foamy, squishy yeah. stuff, is not what you want to use. No. Um, do they sell something that's awesome at a big box store, like, I'm guessing, like Home Depot? or? Yeah. I, I can tell you this much. J.C. Penney's does not sell <laughs> any decent double stick tape, if that's the big box store you're referring to. <laughs> I, I don't uh, there's carpet tape. Yeah, that, that's right. um, that that works. Uh, you could also spray adhesive it on. Oh, that's that a good idea. That might be the better way to go. Yeah. You know, this is the part of the show where I have to come clean and say that um, one of the few really great uses for super glue and masking tape is to stick um, uh, sandpaper to a leveling beam. Yeah, works great. It does. Um, the 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 downside with a lot of the the two X tapes that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace Hardware, or True Value, or whatever they call it now, um, is that it's that foam stuff, and that's not great for what we're doing as guitar makers. Or this carpet tape stuff, which is really sticky and leaves residue and will work, but is also not great for what we do as guitar makers. Um, if you need something right away, uh, then yeah, that'll work. But you know that Taylor Tools, taylortools.com, and then when you get there, search double stick tape. Mm -hmm. That stuff's like 10 bucks a roll, and it's great. And they send it out right away. And I happen to know they'll send it all over the world. I sent two rolls of it to Ben at Crimson Guitars. I don't know if he, I know he got it. I don't know if he ever used it. He probably was like, no, I don't know what Ben did with it, but... He didn't like make a video where he's like, I'm a convert to the, 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 the double stick tape from, I think he still uses the, um, 
the super glue and masking tape thing. Yeah. You know, Colin Powell used to say, don't be too attached to uh, your, your theories to where if they go down, you go down too. I think that some of that stuff, Ben, is so, you know, wrapped up in the super glue masking tape thing that if he ever were to admit this stuff works great, he'd have to, you know, well, one, he'd have to admit that we were right. That'll never and happen. And that'll never happen. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Detailer Guitars LLC says, hey. how to prevent cracks in nitrocellulose? I use lacquer thinner, spray like coats, and I still get cracks. Mm -hmm. Easy answer. Mm. Should I stop using nitro? Um, I, if you're getting cracks and they're coming, if, if it's, you know, six months down the road after a finish, something like that, that's just kind of the nature of the product, especially if you live in a place where it's, uh, really dry and then really humid, or there's big swings in temperature. Yeah. Um, Nitro is pretty brittle, and it lacquer is pretty brittle, and it it will it will crack. And yeah, some people really love that, and other people don't like it. And I think if you're one of the people that don't like it, then don't use it because it's gonna do that. Th that's kind of the thing, isn't it? The the yeah. Actually, yeah. One of the last guitars that we did in nitro in nitro. in lacquer, and it was uh, uh, a bass that I painted. Oh, was it the one the uh -huh. uh, okay. It's never left my house. Okay. And the paint is all checked. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I think that if you like uh, paint that looks brand new all the time, lacquer is not the finishing medium for you. No. If you want the guitar to wear quickly and look old, even if it's brand new, any of the uh, yeah nitrocellulose or acrylic lacquers are going to be where you want to live. Yep. So. Yep. Rich Edwards, Richard hey, Edwards Rich. says, uh, binding question. I started a kit, and after dyeing the top, I scraped the binding. Okay. Got it pretty clean, but there were some little slices that dyed deep, and I can't scrape them out. Any tips? Oh, in the binding. Yeah, in the hmm. binding. We've had this issue before. Yeah, you really just got to work and work and work at it. Um, sometimes you can get some of them with Scotch-Brite, and it won't take the color off the wood. Yeah, I would try something like that. Um, yeah, and I don't, I don't know any other way to get it out. You got, you got to scrape. You've got to remove it mechanically. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that removing it chemically uh, with any sort of solvent is going to do... You might, but what, what's really going to happen, too, is you're going to melt the, the stain that's on the body and you're gonna smear it around or you're mm -hmm. gonna get this weird lip and it won't look right. So yep. the best way to do it is to just methodically go in and, and just keep scraping it with the razor blade. Or if you watch that Stumac video and you have an old section of bandsaw with a burr on it, that'll nah, work too. But get a, get a single side razor blade and, and just go for it that way. Yep, yep. Uh, Doug Cook wants to know hey, proper Doug. storage about, uh, <laughs> proper storage for Coors Light. You know, it's never around very long. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, bridge and then and then mouth and stomach and then toilet. That's the proper storage procedure. <laughs> Liquor store, bridge, glass, or, you know, go proceed directly to face yep. and then, you know, potty. There you go. Christopher Brandt wants to know your classes for the Daily Driver aren't full yet are they uh for the february or yeah february class i think february is full let me check uh, christopher send me an email and uh um let me know which one you're interested in and i will let you know if they are if they are full or not i think the february one is full but there might be one spot okay there you go sean emmenhauser wants to know heiser emmenheiser hey sean wants to know how much oil is enough on a rosewood fingerboard. Um, I don't drown them in, in that stuff. <laughs> I mean, like in I, ounces or? Well, yeah, yeah so I, I put some on, I rub it in, and then I wipe it off, and that's that. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't let it sit. I know, I've known guys that let it sit and soak in, and mm -hmm. they got this whole routine. I ain't got time for that. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't seem to be, and I don't change my strings all that often. Uh, and if it's a good, if it's a nice rosewood board, it should stay nice and mm -hmm. you know oily. 
Yeah, I would time. I would simply reapply uh, if it looks like it's drying out. It's not like an axe handle. You know, it used to be where it was you'd put boiled linseed oil on an axe handle every day for a week, every every uh, week for a month, every month for a year, and then and then every month or every, then every year after that. Um, I don't think you need to worry about. I don't think you need to put that much oil on a on a on a fretboard because again, well, one, it's not hickory, and two, um, it's it's this it's this big instead of a you know an axe handle. So, um, yeah, I would I would put something on there that is uh, an oil that sticks around too. That lemon oil that they sell you at the music store is junk. Don't put that on on at all. Use an actual uh, a, a real penetrating oil, and you it will last a long long time. Yep. Yep. Uh, is there an easy way to prepare wood for gluing? For example, Euro pallets. I don't know what a Euro pallet is, but I, I assume it's a pallet. I'm thinking it's a pallet. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, you've got to have nice, clean, smooth glue surfaces mm -hmm. that are flat and straight, mm -hmm. and, and you can glue them together. Now, I say that, and someone's gonna go. I made a puzzle piece out of out of. I had my CNC machine, and it cut an exactly perfect puzzle piece. And then I was able to glue walnut, and it was it wasn't flat or straight or, yeah. But for the most part, if you're just gluing up boards to glue up boards, your glue surfaces need to be need to be perfect in every way. You, you shouldn't need to you know clamp the living piss out of them to get them to to go. Just yep. just enough pressure to hold them in place. There you go. Uh, John wants to know, have you ever experimented with water-based finishes? Hey, John, I have, but it was in the 90s, the 1990s. And um, uh, I didn't like them very much then. Having said that, I would imagine that 30 years later, there's been a whole lot of advances in waterborne and water-based finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know very much about them. I don't either. Um, uh, the uh, one of the owners of Aquacoat is going to be doing a, uh, a one of these one of these live Q and A's with us, and he's going to be able to answer all of our questions about that. Um, and when that happens, that's going to be a lot of fun. I think his name is John too. Um, it might be him asking. Hey, so um, so yeah, if you've got some questions about uh, about that stuff, the good people at Aquacoat will be able to help you. I know they sell a, 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 a water base clears and things like that so yeah. give, give them a shot uh, let, let the people at aquacoat know what you're looking for and and uh and um they'd be happy to help you out there you go uh ian jackson wants to know is enamel ever used for painting or clear lacquering guitars uh what's the pinstriping stuff that mike used That's um i believe it's it's some sort of enamel mm -hmm. yeah um so yeah um paint terms are so sometimes they're so vague I'm not really exactly sure what okay. what it is. What would happen if you put nitrocellulose lacquer on top of the enamel pinstripe work that Mike did on that that guitar that's I'm looking at? Looking um, at right now? It would if we did lacquer over the top yes. of that. It would probably be okay if you paid attention to how you spray it. Oh, okay, so it wouldn't eat the paint. I don't believe it would if you sprayed a couple of really light dust coats on it okay. first and sort of built that up. Okay. Um, back in the day when I did use lacquer, that's how I would do that. One thing that you guys have to watch out for is making sure that your your paints, whatever they are, are compatible. Mm -hmm. um, so if you run out to the you know the big box store um, and J. buy JC Penney, JC Penney's where they sell lots and lots of spray paint. No, where if you go to you know a store where they sell spray paint. And hose it on uh, to your guitar body and go, man, that's exactly the color I want. And then shoot a bunch of, you know, rattle can lacquer over the top of it. It is possible that it will work, but it is more likely that it's going to start flaking off very, very soon. Yeah, yeah. When I think of enamel, I think of, uh, like, hobby paints, mm -hmm. like tester's paint. Mm, okay. Like, like spray cans of, like, Krylon or something like that that says enamel. Yeah. On it. Yeah. And it's uh, like you don't really know what it is. Okay. Because that's a very vague term. Yeah. I would make sure that your paints are compatible no matter what paints you're using. Whether yep. you're using Solares or enamel or waterborne stuff from Aquacoat, just make sure they work together and you'll be great. Yep. 
Gonzalo Leal asks, hey. I've been making guitars and basses and repairs full time for the last four years. Cool. And I sometimes deal with frustration. It is really hard for me. How you guys deal with frustration? Any advice? You this, know, this is what I do. I go, fucking man. <laughs> it, 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 it is really frustrating all the time. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the, um, one of the things that used to be the, the, the old joke was, you know, making guitars would be great if it wasn't for the guitar players. Um, so you're always going to have customers that are, that are a pain and you're always going to have customers that are really super cool. So I would say that one of the ways that you can kind of mitigate some of that frustration is um, by focusing more on the people that are into what you're doing and cutting loose the guys who don't and just go, this actually happened to me today, this morning. I had to refund a guy his money. And it was obvious to me that he wasn't going to be happy with what we were doing and we were going to have this back and forth. And I said, you know what? I'm going to refund your money and I want you to find someone else to do that. And if you need some recommendations, uh, you know, uh, if, if he wanted those and he was really cool about it. He's like, he sent me an email back. He's like, I get it. You know, it just, it sometimes it just doesn't work out. And you know, he, he's like, he's like, you guys are cool. Um, it's just, it, it's just not, not what, what I wanted. And so, you know, Here's your money back. He goes that way. We go that way. And that's fine. Um, uh, we'll talk about this more when I'm even more liquored up on Sunday. And it, it'll be a different story. But it'll be a funnier story. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So I would say concentrate on the stuff that isn't stressful. And let some of that other stuff just sort of roll off your back as, mu as best you can. You can't do it all the time. You know what I mean? But sometimes if you, if you – it is very cathartic to say – Here's your money back. Oh, no, no, I don't know. Here's your money back. Have a good time. What do you think, Chris? Yeah. Besides, God damn it, man. Yeah, well, that's the only time I get mad. Um, yeah, in, in a lot of ways, you got to just kind of remember that no matter what job you have, there's going to be stresses. Mm -hmm. There's going to be problems. And, you know, at least hopefully you're doing something that you like. Yeah. And something you enjoy doing. And that makes it better. Yeah. And sometimes if you look at it from just a slightly different angle, you can, you know, kind of get rid of some of those frustrations and see, because a lot of people don't really know how to tell you what they mean or what their, their thing sure. is. So you got to kind of think about, well, what are they really asking me? Yeah. And maybe the solution to this is way easier than I, than I think it is, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just come at it from a different angle. I like that. And yeah. Sometimes that's cool. It makes makes it a little bit easier and yeah at the end of the day i always think about i'm making guitars that's pretty fun right yeah even though you know sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to mm -hmm. it's still it's still a cool thing to be able to do yeah so yeah yep uh lars kid asks do you all ever wait <clears throat> i messed that up do y'all ever do swirl paint jobs and mm -hmm. would you do a video tutorial we have not done any swirl paint no. jobs in this shop. Have you ever done those? No, and I watch okay. videos on it, and it looks like a really cool thing mm -hmm. for somebody else to do. Yeah, but I don't have a whole lot of interest in doing it. Yeah, it's not. It's not really my cup of tea. It's not really our thing. Uh, so. Who's it, Lars? Uh -huh. Lars, I want you to look up a guy, Mark Funk, in Florida, and he will uh, be the swirl paint guy, your go-to swirl paint guy. He would be more than happy to. Um, uh, talk to you about that stuff, and he's done a bunch of videos on swirl paint jobs. Mark Funk, Funk Guitars in Florida. Check him out. Mark's a cool guy, too. Anton, Anthony. Hey, Anton. Tony. Lopes, mm -hmm. maybe. I got uh, your email today, by the he way. He wants too, to man. know about the uh, Strat class in June. Is it full? The Strat class in June is absolutely not full. Um, and we would be more than happy to have you come out and hang out with us for a week and build a Strat. And I did get your email today too, Tony. I just I, we're having we're at, blah, 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 blah. we're right in the middle of a class right now, and um, uh, it's hard for me to um, to get back to emails in a timely fashion this week. We're like really the guys are working so so hard, and I'm there with a whip and and forcing everyone to work. And Chris actually ran out of the shop today, and 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 he went to the 
to um, the coffee shop for three hours and he didn't tell anyone where he was going. Just looked at Facebook the whole time. <laughs> no. no, that that did not happen. Um, we it's been it feels like yesterday was Sunday and it's now basically Friday for as in terms of this yeah. class. This class has been a whirlwind of activity yeah, yeah. and the guys have really worked super, super hard. I'm looking at the board of stuff to uh, to do and there's three things. One of them's a big thing, but I think that if they really kick ass tomorrow, you guys are gonna see some awesome, awesome guitars for the live reveal, reveal yeah, of the yeah. of the uh, Build a Classic set net class. So uh, yeah, lots of good stuff to see this and is, yeah. go ahead. This is the fastest the class has ever gone by. Yeah. I think because we worked so hard. Yeah. It's just like poof. There were gone. no breaks. There were no. yeah, it was it was a well, lot. Well Tuesday I was like, Yeah, we got this. This is going really well. Wednesday Me too. I'm like, Oh, I don't uh -huh. know. And today I'm like, Yeah, we'll get it done. This yeah. is this is pretty good. But we put in a big, big day today. Wednesday is And we always, did a big day yesterday. Yeah. But but Wednesday is always the day that like comes up and bites you. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, no matter what what class it is. Yeah. Wednesday is always that day. Uh -huh. um, uh, the it, it's a lot of stuff to jam into five days. It is because there's yeah. the guys. So the guys did binding on their necks and bodies, and it's like just everything that you could do. And and people call me and go, "Oh, I really want to do a carve top." And I'm thinking, there's no time. There's no time in this class to do a carve top. Yeah, and I get it. Right. Everybody wants a carve top, but. No way yeah. could we add that element to no. this. Could you guys no. see like any more stuff that we, yeah, yeah. So, and, and uh, if you're interested in what's been going on, there's going to be another video coming very soon. Uh, I just have to edit it and put it on YouTube. It's going to be fun. So I've been, I don't know if you noticed that I've been chronicling. I have. Some yeah. of what's been going uh -huh. on. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun. I watch every video that you put out, Matt. Do you really? Twice. Why? For the <laughs> algorithm? <laughs> Yeah, one for each of my YouTube <laughs> yeah. subscriptions. Yeah, uh, Travis Elmore says hey, Travis. Uh, Bitterroot has two different style two-way truss rods. Mm. What do you like about the one you use versus the other style? I like that the adjustment rod is contained in a tube. That is to say, the tube doesn't move, but the um, the adjusting rod moves inside the tube. Mm -hmm. So if you got glue or something on that tube, it wouldn't matter. Uh -huh. That's one of the things I like about okay. it. The other thing is I've been using it for so long that that's just what the truss rod that we're jigged up to use. What What do you think? Yeah. You know the ones that they that he's talking yeah, about? Yeah, I do yeah. know the other ones, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I think... I, I, I think that low battery. Oh, ah, farts. It's always something with me, isn't it? It is always something. I don't know if it's still going or not, but yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay. It'll start up again here in a second. Okay, there we go. We had, Sorry. We had a batter, battery issue, guys. Sorry. I think it still goes. Uh, so like those shots does, of whiskey that I was pounding yeah, that you back, pound back, everybody as soon saw. As it goes yeah. to low yeah. battery. Yeah. yeah, no, it stops. But oh, it it's does. Like Ten seconds. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry um, about that, guys. I think I think that we liked that we could do both both uh, headstock install and uh, heel. And that was right. Yeah. Too with yeah. that same truss rod and and kind of the same jig. Tell them about heel adjust truss rods and Texas Toast in 2021. Uh, we're not going to do them anymore. No. <laughs> no, it is not something that we offer anymore. I have one more to do, yeah, and that's the last one I'm gonna do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Zither Beast. Hey, man. Has a question. I bought a cheap slick guitar. Okay. Earl Slick, I think, is what he's talking about. Or he maybe thinks it's super slick. Yeah, cheap it's slick super guitar. Super cool. <laughs> and the saddle bridge sucks. How hard or easy it to replace versus sending the guitar back? I like the guitar, but it won't tune up. I don't know what and kind of bridge And the saddle bridge sucks. Okay. okay. Um, any help is appreciated. I'm not 100% familiar with what bridge it has. But yeah, that's, I think, part of the deal. But I think that you could replace the bridge reasonably easy, regardless of what type of bridge it is, if you're willing to do a little bit of work. So, 
I'm not 100% familiar. It's probably some style of tunematic. Okay. Wouldn't you imagine? Or I, I'll have to look that one up. I don't, yeah, know, I don't know the know. answer to that. I'll have to look that oh, up. Oh, he says it's a Tele style guitar, by the way. Oh. Yeah, well, then I think the world is your oyster. Yeah, there should be a, a, any number of replacement bridges that you yeah. could get or even just replacement saddles that you could get. Yeah, for yeah. It. So if you're just replacing the saddles and you can find direct replacements, that, that should be as simple as turning a screw out and putting a new screw in with the new saddle. Um, if you want to replace the whole bridge, you know, just disassemble everything, pull the old bridge out and plop the new bridge on. You might have to fill the old holes with some dowels or something and, and drill new holes. But yeah, it should be a, a real easy thing to do. Yep. Uh, Deegs wants to know hey. if we've ever used a yellow anline dye to pop flame on a roasted maple neck. Uh, no, uh, we have not. We've used yellow aniline dye to change the color to actually, believe it or not, lighten the color on a roasted ash guitar a couple of times mm -hmm. um, because sometimes when you get sometimes there's roasted wood and then there's roasted wood and sometimes roasted maple that you get looks great and then you put finish on it and it just kind of goes wah wah and it kind of just kind of sucks so I, I have not had I've never experienced the need to really pop grain on any wood but I know that a lot of guys do it um, I, I don't think that, uh, no, I haven't done it, and I probably wouldn't do it, but that's just me. That's kind of how, where I come down on this. It's, doing it would be as, as easy as, as, you know, wiping some, some aniline dye in there, and, and there you go. Bob's your uncle. It, yep. If it pops it out, it pops it out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, and it could, yeah, it, it's probably going to be fine, but it, it we, man, we had some, some roasted maple that we got, and boy, it looked cool raw. Soon as you put any finish on it, it, it got uncool. It got really cool. So quick. dark, it didn't look like wood anymore. Yeah, it looked like it looked like brown plastic. Yeah, yeah, it was a bummer. Mm -hmm. uh, I see BLF. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, any thoughts on zero frets? Easier to build and set up than a lot of careful nut work, or just different? Hmm. Well, we have done a video. In fact, it's a it's a for us a reasonably popular video uh -huh. on the shocking truth behind zero frets. Yep. Um, I like zero frets, though I don't use them very often. Yeah, yeah, and I think it just different. Mm -hmm. You got to always, you know, there's there's careful nut work mm -hmm. on a guitar that doesn't have a zero fret, but you ha if you can't buy a string guide. Then you have to make a string guide, and yeah. that can be just as much or more work than just making a nut. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I like the 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 theory of a zero fret is that you can have the string guide. If your nut is too low, then you got to make a new nut, or you got to you know put a bunch of pooty in the nut slot and and cut it again. If you if your zero, or I'm sorry, if your string guide on your zero fret is too low, but it still stops the side-to-side -side movement, then it's no big shake. Right. Um, but you still got to do it, you know. Um, the, 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 the real downside to me is the, that, that zero frets get a bad rap because people associate them with low-cost guitars. Of course, there are other guitars out there with zero frets that are wildly expensive. So, but yeah, but I think that what happens is there's a stigma of the zero fret, and that is that they're they're cheap. But I I think the zero frets are a really cool thing. Yeah, yeah. We put zero frets on uh, two of the necks on the GGBO guitar. Oh, that's right. Just we because did, didn't we, we could. Just because we could. Yep. yep. Just to show that we could. And that guitar was one of the more expensive guitars we've ever sold. Yep. What did it sell for? Uh, 7,000 bucks, there almost 7,100. There you go. Yep. Uh, Clive Gregory wants to know, set neck into a poplar body, doable or not? Absolutely doable. Yep. One of my, actually a couple of my favorite guitars that I own are poplar set neck guitars with maple necks. Poplar's a cool, cool one. And it, uh -huh. it sometimes gets a bad rap too. Yep. Yeah. Um, Hurdy Gertie just says, uh, I think the videos this week have been great. Can't cool. wait to see, see tomorrow. Okay. 
Christopher Brandt, uh, I just built a fender style six inline neck from scratch, and when I put the cool. tuners and strings on, the high E leaves the nut at a right angle. Mm. Is at this a right be angle? An issue. The high E leaves the nut at a right angle. If the high E leaves the nut at a right angle, yes, that is a big, big issue. Because that means it comes off the nut and goes 90 degrees the other (laughs) way. I don't believe that's what he's saying. But I think he's saying that it's a little bit, it's not exactly right. But it could be that that's what he means if the tuner peg is back far enough. Or if it's back too far. You know what I'm saying? It could. The high E? Oh, no, the high E. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's going to be an issue there. It's probably pretty close to straight, and it's yeah. not really going to be a deal. If the string breaks off the nut at 90 degrees, that's a big deal. If it just sort of glances off the nut at an angle, I wouldn't sweat it. Um, and then on the next one that you make, just scooch that scooch that hole uh, a little bit into the direction that it needs to go, and, and you know, making guitars is fun. <laughs> Matthew Cohen wants to know, hey. whoa, what is the beef with heel adjust truss rods? Oh, Wink. there's no there's no beef with heel adjust truss rods. I just don't like doing them anymore. Well, yeah, and, and there's no real point to them at this point. You know, I mean, yeah. we have a we have a a head mm-hmm. adjust that we like for both styles of necks that we make. Yeah, and they and both look it's very similar. They both so, look similar yeah. and they're both easier to adjust. There's no pulling necks and, and mm-hmm. all of that. You can adjust it with the neck and the strings attached. Yeah. So there's really no point in doing it other than vintage tradition, which we're not building Fender guitars, we're building Texas yeah. Toast guitars. Yeah. So I used to like the uh, having more real estate on the headstock for my logo. Yeah. But but we have <laughs> the way that we have it set up now, it, it's fine. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh Liam G. asks, do you hey, know man. much about guitars with metal necks? For example, Electrical Guitar Company. Are, guys with metal, are guitars with metal necks made with some relief bow in them since they don't move or aren't adjustable? Okay, I have owned numerous Kramer aluminum necks. Aluminum is a metal. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, they were made in the 70s. Um, uh, and I loved them. I loved them so much. They were aluminum and then they had these wood just pieces that they weren't there for any structural reason. Yeah. But when Kramer split with Travis Bean, Travis Bean and Kramer used to make all metal necks. Mm -hmm. And Kramer wanted one that looked like um, you know, it had some wood in it. And the wood pieces always come out and they get they get loose. Um, and it's sort of like an I beam construction. And there are it's got a it's got a uh, Ebonel fretboard. They all had Ebonel fretboards, which was basically probably rich light or something not unlike that. It was a phenol- a phenolic material that was black and looked cool. They all had zero frets. And um, uh, there were no, there's no relief in them because that's what you want. Everyone thinks you need relief in the neck. I do not agree with that. What is, what is a proper amount of relief? Dead flat. No, I mean, if, oh. if, if you want relief, oh. what is the measurement? Well, I don't know what that is. If, if, if you have a guitar that has relief... Hand me a, hand me a set of uh, calipers. Okay. If you have a guitar that has relief and you want to match all your other guitars to it, then you need to match to that. You don't necessarily have to do it at any sort of specific yeah. amount. But generally speaking, uh, a neck needs to be flat. And I'll fight you on this till the cows come home. Actually, I won't. I'll just go, you do what you want and I'll do what I want. Um, a flat neck is what you want. Um, so no, the aluminum necks that I have owned in the past, and they were Kramer necks, did not have any, uh, any relief built into them. And they were dead flat. That's the recommended amount of relief. What do you got there? Uh, Ten thousandths? No, two hundred or two two thousandths. No. Twenty thousandths. No, not twenty thousandths. Two thousandths. Two thousandths? Yeah. Okay. That's not very much. No, it's tiny, yeah. tiny amount. Yeah. And most people think that you know you can see. You really can't. That, yeah, that's twenty thousandths. Because that's a hundred thousandths right there. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty thousandths. That's yeah. That's hardly. Any. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what the yeah. 
Like, I'm so stupid. <laughs> you I'm like so all worn dumb. out. But anyway, yeah, 20,000. So if you get a neck and you look down it and you see this big bow and you go, yeah, that's got some relief in it. <laughs> that's not what you want. too much relief. You should not be Way able to too much see relief. it. And if you, yeah, put the, you know, <laughs> the, the string on there and, yeah, anyway. Here's what I will tell you, though. I lo absolutely loved my Kramer aluminum neck guitars. Every time I played them on stage, under stage lights, they went from perfectly in tune to immediately out of tune in like a second because it gets hot and the neck heats up and your hand is on the neck and it heats up the neck. And yeah, they. it is my experience that they do not stay in tune. This is where I can hear it. Our, my aluminum neck guitar, fine. But mine didn't, so yeah. If yours do, that's cool, but mine, mine didn't. Yeah. But God, they were cool. Man, they were neat. I love them. And they were wildly heavy. And they were koa, like the, the they were solid koa bodies. Because koa wasn't a big deal back then. Forty some years ago. Yep. Yep. Ian Jackson wants to know, does a zero fret become the measuring point for the scale? Yes. But it doesn't become, it always is. Yes, that's true. Yeah. The the front edge of the nut is the same as the the center of a zero fret mm -hmm. that's on right. the top. That's right. So, and there, and somebody else said, if you install a zero fret, you might have to move your bridge back a little. Uh, it's hard to install yeah. a zero fret. Well, you could use one of those, uh, that zero fret, zero the glide zero glide thing. thing. Yeah. But even that, the, the center of the top of the fret is exactly the, the, yeah. the starting point of the... They have it figured it. out. Yeah. If you need to reset your intonation, it's going to be a teeny tiny amount. Yeah, would, and I would think it would be because of something else, not because of that. Yeah, it, it's going to be another one of those twenty or 30,000 mm -hmm. measurements. Yeah, Matthew Cohen wants to know, from start to finish, leaving your shop uninterrupted by other work, how long does it take for a challenger to be made on average? I think the the... the crux of the question is uninterrupted yeah yeah and and if you just started on monday mm -hmm. when would it be done yes the, the we, we don't work like that one thing yeah we do not just go all right i'm gonna make one guitar from start to finish and i'm not gonna do anything else. i know and i know that you're yeah. not asking that i think an easier way to put it would be to just put it in an hour our kind of a format. How yeah. many hours does it take to build a challenge? About forty to fifty hours, depending yeah. on what sorts of things you you want. We could say that the great guitar build off guitar mm -hmm. took about three weeks to do, but there was paint that had to dry, and there mm -hmm. was you know other stuff like yeah. that, and there was trips to Mike Learns, and there was you know cameras all over the place, and and so it it wasn't. Um, it, if we were if we were to to make a one neck guitar instead of a three neck guitar, it wouldn't take three weeks to do. But you know, glue has to dry, paint has to cure, uh, things have to get. Yeah, what's the? <laughs> it's, it's the zero fret thing. Oh, guys. <laughs> yeah, you're not moving the point, the starting point with a zero fret. How about this? You, it's always the zero fret. Yeah, you guys are right. <laughs> that sounds good, yeah. Kenny. You're right. Do whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Todd wants to know, do you guys give an, uh, do you guys give estimates on custom guitars or if I have to ask, I can't afford it? No, we'll give you an estimate. Uh, yeah. All of our stuff, uh, all of our custom guitars start at 2,500. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Tom L wants to know if you can build an SG in the set net class. Funny you should ask. That's <laughs> what I'm building right now. You want to see yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> More zero fret? Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can build you can build lots of things in our set net class. This is the guitar that I am building alongside the guys. Um, as you can see, it is a 3P90 style SG. There's binding tape all over it, but it's got a maple top and a mahogany back. And the neck is also mahogany with a black poison wood fretboard. And it's even mostly shaped because it's already Thursday. So it will go into here, whoa, like this, and be a really cool, a really cool SG. And you could make one too. You could make something nice. You could, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. 
Where'd it go? I don't know. There it is. Uh, Marum Guitars says, Hey guys, I'm new to this from a production standpoint. Could you comment on where to purchase quality screws, both wood and machined? Thanks. McMaster Car. <laughs> yeah, you can go there. Um, I, I actually buy a lot of uh, screws in bulk. From the screw company Fastener, Fastenel. Fastener, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Fastenel. Anyway, yeah. but I get them on eBay. Okay. Because um, you can find, you know, you can find guys that sell them in big giant lots, and like I buy a thousand pick guard screws at a time, yeah. and a hundred neck screws and stuff like that. But those are they're all really quality stainless screws, mm -hmm. and they look exactly like the stuff you pull off of name brand guitars. Yeah. So. If you if you don't want to go through eBay or you want to buy tens of thousands of screws, McMaster Car or Granger, or, well Granger's gonna be more expensive. But yeah, um, yeah. Um, um, I mean, if you just need MSC, a couple... any of those like yeah. industrial supply, they're all the same screws. They're not guitar specific screws. Correct. I used to think that there were guitar specific <laughs> yeah. screws. They're not. Yeah. Um, you can also go to Ace True Value and buy a couple of screws in their stainless section. Yeah. And same with Home Depot. Yeah. All that stuff's good, too. Just incidentally, did you know why the AR-15 M16 rifle um, was kind of a paradigm shift in, in gun design? There's uh, a lot of reasons. No. Uh, you know, uh, phen phenolic parts and, and, uh -huh. and aluminum and things like that. But one of the things was there were no, uh, not everything was on there was a gun-specific thing. So, like, the spring pins that they used or the roll pins that they used were just the same regular old spring pins or roll pins that everybody else used for everything else. So it wasn't like, oh, I have to have this special gun thing. No, it was this regular old deal. So springs and pins and, and detents weren't anything special. They were stuff that, you know, were used in lots of other uh, um, uh, industries too. And guitars are the same way, especially the modern stuff. There's no guitar specific screw. It's just a regular old screw. And you can go to McMaster Car and you can go to MSC and you can go to eBay or, or you know, any of these places that uh, uh, Fastenel and, and get this stuff and it'll be exactly the same stuff that Fender and Jackson and Gibson and Ibanez and, and Taylor and all these other guys use. It's all the same stuff. Yep. Um... Wouldn't it be funny though if there was a guy like making like a, a little a little luthier with a with a, a area under his bench that's like worn down from him standing there for 50 years whittling screws that are guitar specific? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, is it okay to have a tiny bit of space on each side of your neck when you fit it in the neck pocket? Uh, it's a glue on neck, i.e. just center it and glue. Well, it depends on how what you mean by tiny and what I mean by tiny. And yeah, yeah, you wanna, it's okay. Um, uh, if, in the, in the, in comparison to the US interstate highway system, a quarter of an inch is tiny. In terms of relief on each side of a of a neck and the guitar that's getting glued in, that's way too big. That might as well be a mile. Um, but if you've got like a, a piece of tape thickness, then that's absolutely fine. If you got two or three, that's probably good too. Um, I've seen guys do this where they they're like, and I used to be one of these guys. My neck has to be so tight, I jam it in there, and. And once I get it all the way jammed in there, then I can pick it up and take pictures of it and show everybody on, on the internet and go, hey, everybody, look at my neck. I can dangle it around and not have any glue in there. Then you go to put glue in, and guess what it does? You added water to the neck pocket, um, or even if you used epoxy, you added some sort of mass that has to go in there, and it has nowhere to go. And I've actually seen guys get necks so tight, and when they go to glue them in, they don't see because they cannot clamp them tight enough. So Richard says uh, two millimeters, maybe. Two that's millimeters. Space. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's two dimes all the way around. Yeah. That's a lot. I, it will work, but it sure, see, I would, I would shim that out. Yeah, I would too. I would, I would figure out a way to tighten that pocket up a little bit. Yeah. And, and then you can add stuff on each side and then you don't have to worry about centering it because trying to center a neck the thing, and yeah. clamp it, yeah. it's gonna move. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Yep, even if even if you just filled it with little bits of, uh, you know, like like veneer. Sure. Or, 
you know, whatever. Yep. Uh huh. Okay, that fellow wants to know what if I paint the body of my guitar before gluing the top and binding on and then clear coat it? What if I paint? my guitar before I bind it yeah so so what he's saying is is he wants to what if we painted this mm -hmm. before we glued the top on okay and then glued our binding on wait what, what, what was the read read it read what he asked all the okay. way through one more time what if I paint the body of my guitar before mm -hmm. gluing the top and binding on and clear coating okay so you want to paint the guitar and then put the top on and mm -hmm. then put the binding on and mm -hmm. then put the clear on yes if I you, think he doesn't want to tape or scrape binding. If you do that, you will eat the finish with the binding tape or the binding adhesive. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you will it, get glue all over the paint, gluing the top on. You would be, you, there, is, there is no good reason to do that at all. Can you think of any reason? No. And I can't, I can't no. imagine any reason why you would want to do that or, or how that would yield anything satisfactory it, it won't yeah yeah you have to tape the binding mm -hmm. or scrape the binding after the paint has gone on mm -hmm. and it's not a big deal it's not that you. big of a deal yeah you, if you it don't be, believe it's me. easier than trying to <laughs> keep paint yes yeah nice on the sides after you glue it yeah if you on. don't believe me try it on a test piece uh huh. And then when and and if if you can do it, then you can come back here and go. See, I told you I could do it, and I'll be like, "Cool, happy meal for you. You yeah. you 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 did it." But I can't imagine a, a world where that will work. No, nope. maybe a world where it would work, but yeah, I can't I can't imagine a scenario <laughs> in the reality that I know to yeah. be true to to where that would that would be effective. Yep. And as a follow up, he did say, "I don't know what I'm doing." Ha ha. Well, yeah. I so. Raw wood and binding is not hard. I, I, we three guys who have never done binding before ever all put binding on their guitars today, and they look awesome. They did such a good job, um, and it wasn't that tricky, right, guys? So yeah, scraping scraping some back or or masking it off, uh, it just takes a little bit of practice, just like anything. Yeah, you know what I mean. You weren't good at using a fork the first time you used it. But now you can do it like, you know, you don't even, you, you know exactly where it is in relation to the rest of your face. You don't poke yourself in the eye with it anymore. Yep. Yep. No, <laughs> there you go. And you don't walk around with a fork all day. Not anymore. Just a few, <laughs> just, just a few, just a few hours a week you have a fork in your hand, but it's practically second nature. Yeah. And you weren't born with a fork. It's not, it's not like, uh, like, you know, your mother didn't, you know push you out with a fork in your hand and if she did that was a wildly interesting birth so yeah so it's not uh yeah you you can do it and you don't need yep. to come up with a yep. crazy contraption yep well i think we're done okay guys thanks for watching our weekly q a it's always fun to hang out with you guys and and tell funny stories and and jokes and listen to what you guys have to say i love to to, to hear that how about you chris yep it's always fun i'd like to thank our sponsors flipside music the great american guitar store Aqua Coat, High Performance Grain Filler, Guitar Wood Experts, Bitter Root Guitars. Who am I missing? Uh, I think that's it. You got Guitar Wood Experts, uh -huh. Bitter Root Guitars, uh -huh. Aqua Coat, uh -huh. Flipside. Uh -huh. I think that's it. I think that's it. So thanks to all of our sponsors. Maybe one day I'll be able to add Grizzly to that list. I'm working on it, you guys. I hope that uh, if, you're, if you're planning on buying some Grizzly tools, you hold out until Matt gets his discount code for you. Um, so until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you, if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. And life is short. You might as well have a cool guitar. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time.